This is 13-4, solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So this is the last bit of content that will be new. The rest of it will be all application, using with different equations. Today, you're going to use the quadratic formula. And tomorrow, we're going to present you with a bunch of different quadratic equations. And you use whatever method is easiest for the situation. All right, so let's start with the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, whereas the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now I have a little song that might help you to remember it. And it goes like, pop goes the weasel x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now try it with me. Sorry about my voice, I'm losing it. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now cover the formula with your hand and see if you can do it on your own x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, I don't care if you don't learn the song, but my performing arts students tend to like it. But you do have to learn that formula. All right, so let's start to apply that. So when given a quadratic equation, the first thing I need to do is I need to find my a, my b, my c. Where are those? Those are the coefficients of your x squared term, your quadratic term, your linear term, and your constant term. So my a equals 2, my b equals 5, and my c is negative 3. And now all I have to do is substitute in for the formula. Negative 5 plus or minus b squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 all over 2 times 2. I simplify that out inside the square root, do my order of operations, exponents first, then do my multiplying of negative 4 times 2 times negative 3, and then I simplify that out, I get, I get 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. Now I want you guys working up, um, up and down. Please don't work your equations side to side. Um, please don't work side to side. Um, just do it in steps on top of each other. Okay, now once it's simplified is when we split the equation. So this means negative 5 plus 7 divided by 4, negative 5 minus 7 divided by 4. And they simplify to 1 half and negative 3. Okay. Pause it if you need to take notes. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do what we did yesterday. We're going to complete the square. So if I were to complete the square with the quadratic equation, let's see where we end up. So step one, we subtract c. Next step is to get rid of that leading coefficient a, so I divide everything by a. And I get x squared plus b over a times x. I just dropped my x down and made b over a, the coefficient, equals negative c over a. Now, remember what we do? For the middle term, we have to divide it by 2 and then square it. When we divide fractions, instead of dividing, we multiply by the reciprocal. So now I'm going to do b over 2a. Uh, it would be b squared over 4a. And I will add that to both sides of the equation. Next step. 
all I did was move this right here. I did that because it's going to be easier to find that common denominator so I can add those. I have to multiply the top and bottom by 4a, a fancy one, doesn't change its value. And then what I get is 4a squared in the denominator, 4ac in the numerator, b squared over 4a squared. And on the other side, I'm factoring it. Let me go back. Let's look at how we factor that. OK, so let's go. Over here, I have an x squared, right? And the square root of that, we know it's going to be a plus sign. But I'm going to have a b for the numerator. The square root of the b squared is that, is b. The square root of 4a squared is 2a. And if we do that, and that's when I get my b squared over 4a, 4a squared, sorry. minus 4ac over 4a squared. That's how I got that factor. I'm going to erase this and put the PowerPoint up. Okay. Next step, take the square root of both sides. Well, actually, I'm going to just write the whole right side under 1 as one denominator. Since it's the same denominator, I can write it with one denominator. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. Now, the numerator of the right side is not a perfect square. So I'm going to have to keep that. Let's start, I guess, left from right. Uh, the first side, I'm going to take the absolute value of x plus b over 2a equals... e squared minus 4ac. That's not a perfect square. The a and c is not a perfect square in that binomial over the square root of 4a squared. That is, however, a perfect square. So when I take the square root of that, I end up with 2a. I've got my b squared minus 4ac. Okay, now if I want to lose that absolute value, I have to add the plus or minus sign. And the last step, subtract b over 2a. I'm going to just erase this because the PowerPoint's neater. And the last step would be to subtract b minus 2a. Now, since it's all both the same denominator, I could put it all under one denominator. And let's go back to my original question. If I complete the square with the original quadratic equation, where do I end up? And that is with the quadratic formula. What you've just done is derived the quadratic formula. Now, you're going to need to practice this. Try it over and over again because you will be tested on the different steps of this. It will be on standardized tests, on SATs, on CSDs, on high school exit exams. So make sure you learn how to do this. All right, so let's go back to solving using the quadratic formula. Step one. Remember, we have to find our a, our b, and our c. All right, so we find our a, our b, and our c. And now we substitute in. Now, here's what I want you to be really careful about, and I, I really take a special precaution to do this. Notice my b is a negative, but the, in the formula, it's also a negative. So that means you're going to have two negatives there. Make sure you write them both down. Notice them. See them. Because 
they are, um, you know, I don't want you to lose that negative there. So that really makes that number positive. So we get positive 4 plus or minus 16. And then negative 4 and 1 make positive 4 times 2 is 12. Positive 12 over 6. Inside, we get radical 28. 4 plus or minus radical 28 over 6. Now, you can leave it in radical form as long as it's reduced radical. And 28 is not reduced radical. 28 is made up of radical. That's 4 plus or minus. Do it up here. 4 plus or minus radical 4 times radical 7 all over 6. So that makes 4 plus or minus 2 radical 7 all over 6. Now, all th two terms, I have a common factor because this really means 4 over 6 plus or minus 2 radical 7 over 6. I'm not going to split it right there. I'm going to, now I'm noticing both terms, all terms have a similar factor. So I'm going to factor that out. I can divide a 2 out of here. I'm left with 1. I can divide a 2 out of here. I'm left with 2. I can divide a 2 out of here and I'm left with a 3. So what I'm left with is 2 plus or minus radical 7 over 3. Now, if in fact I had been left Let me show you how my PowerPoint does it, too. They do a little bit different, but that's okay. They factor the numerator, and then they divide it out. The common factor. Um, now, had I been left with something like this, um, 4, let's say our answer was 4 plus uh, radical 2 over 2. I'm going to have to split that to 4 over 2 plus or minus radical 2 over 2 because only this first fraction reduces. I can't divide. There's no common factor right here. No common factor. So the only thing I can divide the 2 out of is here. And so that would become 2 plus or minus radical 2 over 2. 2 plus radical 2 over 2, 2 minus radical 2 over 2. Okay? All right. So remember, um, now, when you were doing the math for this, reduced radical form is really how we want the answer. We really do want this answer like this or like this. But once you start applying it to the word problems, you're going to have to estimate. The square root of 7 is about, it's somewhere between 4 and 9. So it's about 2.6, let's say 2.6. So I end up with 4.6 divided by 3 or 2.6 divided by 3, and what you get is, you have to add the numerators, then divide by the denominator. Oops, sorry. What you get was um, about 1 and 55 hundredths, or negative 22 hundredths. Now, for a word problem, one of those might eliminate, because it might have to do with time. So... You know, for the purposes of math, we use it in reduced radical form. And if you're using application, you're going to need to multiply that out. Reduced radical form is far more accurate. All right, so you pause the, pause the, um, pause the recording and do the next one. But before that, I want you to notice... 
it says solve. Look at the different ways they ask this question. Solve. Um, let's see how the first one said. Okay, it just said solve. Second one said solve as well. And round to the nearest hundredth. So this one's telling us to multiply it out. The next one is telling us to find the x-intercepts. That's solving for x. Remember, every time we're doing this, we're finding where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Um, okay, so pause the recording and you try the next one. Now check your work. Substitute in. A is negative 1. B is 5. C is 2. Substitute in. And 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 times 2 is 8. All divided by negative 2. 33. And we can leave it like that, or we can estimate 33 falls somewhere between um, 36 and 25. It's closer to 36, so it's about 5.7, 5.8. So we get negative 4 tenths, or 5 and 4 tenths. Okay. Remember, the top circle is a perfectly good answer. That's how we're going to be answering them in the book tonight. All right, so if given a quadratic equation like this, it's not in the standard form, then we have to just make it and set it equal to 0. When y equals 0, then we can find our x. So I subtract it. Use the quadratic formula. Pause it. You try the next one and go again. Now check your work. Substitute in. And you should have gotten 1.5 or negative 4.5, 4 and 5 tenths. All right, the discriminant. The discriminant tells us a lot with only a little bit of information. The discriminant is tells us how many roots we have. Not what the roots are, but how many. Okay, and the discriminant is that piece of the quadratic formula inside the square root. b squared minus 4ac. So if b squared minus 4ac, when we add that all up and simplify it down to a number, if it's greater than 0, that means we have two real roots. If it's less than 0, or if it equals 0, it means we have one root. And if it is less than zero, it means there are no real roots. Now, what does that mean? That just means it doesn't cross the x-axis. So when we say no real roots, it means it's up here, or here, or here, or here. It's not crossing the x-axis. No real roots when it's less than zero. All right, so given an equation, Let's use our discriminant, okay? Remember the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. My a is 2, my b is negative 5, and my c is 3. I substitute it in. Negative 5 squared minus 4. 25 minus 24 equals 1. So what I want to know is how many roots do we have? Because this number is greater than 0, 
it means we have two real roots, two solutions. Okay? That means it is crossing the x axis because it's positive, it opens up. It's going to cross two times. I don't exactly know where, but I know it will cross two times. Next one. My A is negative 1, my B is negative 2, my C is negative 3. Why don't you finish this one, pause the recording, and tell me <coughs> and f figure out how many roots or x-intercepts they have. Now check your work. b squared minus 4ac. 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 7. 16 times negative 28 equals negative 12. Now remember, this is the part of this, the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of negative 12. Can we do that? No. Also, because it's a number that's less than zero, less than zero, it means we have no real roots, no real solutions. Determine the number of x-intercepts. Now look how they asked it differently. Determine the number of roots for the quadratic equation. The next question that we just did said determine the number of x-intercepts. It's the same thing. They might ask you to determine the number of solutions. Okay, so let's try it one more time. You guys use, figure out the number of x-intercepts. Pause the recording. Now check your work. Hopefully, you figured out that you have to use the discriminant because we want to know how many x-intercepts, not what the x-intercepts are. So my a is 1, my b is negative 6, my c is 9. Use my discriminant, negative 6 squared minus 4 times 9. 36 minus 36 equals 0. And so there we have it. We are left with one real solution. One real solution. And so now, um, okay, and again, this is how, oh, that's not what I meant to do. This is how that graph's going to look. That's going to be right on the vertex. Actually, why is it? One, two, three. The vertex is going to touch. It only touches once because it equals zero. All right, other ways you might be able to use the discriminant, match the graph with the equation. Use the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, negative one minus four times two times one. We get negative one minus eight, okay? Ends up with a negative number. So the Beth's graph that goes with that does not cross the x-axis. So that would have to be b. Number two, substitute negative one minus four times one times negative two. One plus eight makes nine. This time, because the number is greater than zero, it means it has two real roots. So the best graph would be C. Okay, so now we're at the last one. Um, so again, C shows all real, two real roots. Now if I do the last one, and I take my B squared minus 4AC, substitute in 1, negative 2, and 1, we end up with 4 minus 4 is 0. And so the, that means if I have, if my um, discriminant is equal to 0, it means we have one root. 
and the graph that shows one root would be A, where the vertex is touching. <coughs> Another way, <coughs> excuse me, you might be able to, they might ask you this question, is tell whether the vertex lies above or below or on the x-axis. So we use the discriminant. We know that this opens up. Now I use my discriminant. Substitute in. Okay, so it opens up and it doesn't cross the x-axis. So as I draw that, okay, now I can answer that question. Does the vertex lie above or below or on the x-axis? Above. So pause the recording and you try the next one. Now check your work. Step one, which way does it open? It opens down. Use our b squared minus 4ac, substitute in negative 1, 5, and a 1 for the a, b, and c, 29. This tells me, because the discriminant is greater than 0, it tells me I have two real roots. Thus, I know that it opens down and it crosses. So I, it lies above the x-axis. And this is basically 13-4 using the quadratic formula. Stop the recording. <coughs>